Okay, I think we're live. <laughs> All right, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Darima Hamilton, and I'm the executive director of Ideal CDC. We're super excited for our workshop today and that you're joining us here today for this amazing workshop talking about resumes, interviews. And I know that sometimes can be a little bit daunting or overwhelming, especially now with the challenge of facing COVID and everything going virtual. But that's why we conduct these workshops to be able to help you to navigate through some of that and hopefully provide value to you as you are preparing for this new phase, as you start a new career or find a new job, whether it's for the holiday season or now that you've graduated college or high school. So we're really excited for today's presentation. Um, today, our friends from Bank of California are joining us to be part of this conversation, but to also provide value to each and every one of you insider knowledge, insider expertise to help you with some of this, um, I guess, the resumes, like how to build your resume, how to get a cover letter ready and prepared for the workforce. Um, but at this time, I would like to introduce my colleague, Josue, who um, will be participating in the conversation and um, facilitating some of the questions that we are gonna be covering today. So Josue, if you would like to introduce yourself, Hello, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Josue or Josh or Joshua, whatever you want to call me. I am the program director slash marketing here at the Ideal CDC. We're so excited to have you know our partners here with us. I know we have Anna and Riley with us. I'm really excited for this conversation we're going to have today on resumes and interviews. It's probably like one of the most hot topics, you know, when after graduating college, you know, everyone would be talking about this. You know, man, I'm going my first interview. I'm going to go apply to my first job. I actually had the opportunity to get a job right out of college. And I remember in my interview process, it was so daunting before arriving there, making sure, you know, I have all the right documents, making sure I'm arriving on time. Oh, you know, making sure like my hair is not messed up or everything. And then I got in there. I did my very <laughs> best. I had my resume all good. Before that, I had a, a, a phone interview. I made sure, you know, I put on the order. My, my cologne was on and everything. And I, I think I, I aced it because I got the job. So it was a really great experience. So. But besides that, I know this experience for you guys will help you guys out a lot if you guys are a little bit worried or anxious about your resume. It doesn't matter if you graduated college or maybe you, you lost your job during that pandemic and you're trying to maybe work in a different industry. So this is going to be very helpful for all of you guys. I'm very excited. and I'll, I'll give it back to you, Darima. Thank you, Joshua. Um, <laughs> congratulations on getting your first job after college. And I know now you're with us, but that's really awesome. And I know it could be a little bit crazy. I'm um, trying to figure out all that, what to put on your resume, why not. But at this time, I will introduce our friends over from Bank of California, Anna and Riley. So at this time, Anna, Riley, if you guys would like to introduce yourself, what you do at the bank, and then we'll get started with the conversation. Hi, everyone. Uh, so my name is Anna, and I'm working at the Bank of California. Um, my particular title is Executive Assistant and my day-to-day -day job functions include supporting and providing administrative support to um, several C-level executives. Um, by C-level, it's chief executive, you know, not, not the CEO, but I'm supporting the chief risk officer, chief uh, credit officer, and then um, also our general counsel. And this is something that I've been doing for about now 20 years. So um, I've been with the bank for almost three years now. So. Awesome, thank you. Riley? Hi, my name is Riley. I'm one of our talent acquisition professionals um, here at Bank of California. On a day-to-day -day basis, I meet with hiring managers to understand their hiring strategy, uh, review resumes, set up interviews for candidates, which almost all of our interviews right now are virtual. So it is a new environment. We're all getting used to it. Uh, <laughs> and then providing feedback and helping with the employee onboarding experience. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. We're super excited for the conversation and just to learn, um, even though I don't plan to change careers anytime soon, but it doesn't hurt to update that resume and get a refresher, especially now that things have shifted so much and we don't know if um, things are going to change or go back anytime soon, right? Um, we hope for the best, but right now we have to pivot and adapt. And so we're very grateful for you guys joining us here today, especially now that you've had a few months of experience under COVID and conducting virtual um, 
reserve or interviews, right? And so, um, but yeah, so let's get started. So um, these last couple of weeks, we were able to gather some questions from our members, from our audience, based on the topic. And uh, one of the things that came up was what are some tips for resumes? Like what are some, some of the top things that one should have on their resume when getting that together? Uh, sure, I can, I can start off. Um, for your resume, especially if you don't have a lot of work experience yet, um, I try to look at the job description to, for the position to which I'm applying and understand what are the most important skills. Am I going to be doing data entry? Okay, great. I can talk about those, my, my word typing speed. You know, there are a lot of free tests that you can take out there. Um, 10 key, knowing the, the side numbers by touch. That, that's really important if you're going to go into something data entry or finance related. Um, and then finding those other skills, whether it's customer service, maybe I haven't had a customer service position yet, but I was treasurer of a club. And so I had to manage our, our money and our donations, anything like that, that's an applicable skill that you can use in the real world when um, trying to apply for some of these positions are, are things that I like to try and highlight first and foremost, specific to the job description, and then make sure that they're incorporated into my resume. Uh, your resume should have some basic information, your, your name at the top, um, the city uh, and state in which you reside, and maybe your zip code, but you don't need to put your street address. That, that's <laughs> fine to keep professional. Um, and then the two ways to contact you, your best uh, phone number, so usually your cell phone, and then your email address. And I would caution you to make a new email address that's very professional rather than use something that you may have been using for a long time. And um, then based on the type of role, um, you can find out what kind of experience would be necessary. So put your education at the top, um, your objective, you know, are you seeking an entry level position? Are you looking to gain experience? Um, and then go through any volunteer experience that you may have, whether it's with organizations through school or with the community. And then if you have relevant work experience, add that out. And if you don't have relevant work experience, I would build out my volunteer experience to be similar to how I would say something about a job. Anna, did you have anything else that you'd like to add to resumes? Uh, nothing to add. I would say just proofreading. <laughs> <laughs> Very Definitely important. Do, please do proofread. Um, I definitely agree on all of the points. The email address, do keep it professional, you know, anything cutesy, funny, humorous, and things like that. Keep it for personal, you know, creating a new one doesn't cost anything. So, you know, do that. Um, just like Riley mentioned, you don't need to put in your full home address, but something like at least a county or a city, because, you know, even now, primarily it's a lot of things are done virtually, but down the road, you know, kind of your location will help the hiring managers and the recruiters get an idea of what needs to be involved in the logistics of bringing you on board. Um, keep it short, precise. Um, so, yeah. I think these were all great tips. Uh, one question I had is, uh, so all those things we should have in our resume, what are things from you guys I've seen in resumes that like you should definitely avoid? Like number one things that you should never put on your resume or things that maybe turn you off as, a, as you're reading the resumes and you're like, okay, this definitely I'll put it to the side. Um, well, from my experience, depending on the level of the position that you're applying mm -hmm. for and thing, but, and I'll see if Riley will agree or not, but, um, the monetary compensation, I think is usually, yeah. Okay. Thank you for, for backing up. I, I was trying to be sort of soft on, but, um, it's, it's frowned upon whether you are a junior level, whether you're entry level or you are, you know, management, it's don't just keep it out of it. <laughs> Do not put down your hourly rate or your salary and things like that. Mm. That's <laughs> what kind of benefits Under you want. <laughs> yeah. No, there's actually um, a state law in the uh, in California that employers, prospective employers can't ask you what you made in your last position. Mm. So don't volunteer that information. Ask them 
what's the salary range you're targeting for this type of position and what are the benefits like? It shows that you're looking long-term if this is gonna be the right fit for you. And it helps you to negotiate based on the position that you're trying to get into based uh, versus what you were paid in your last role. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's very helpful for potential employees as they're evaluating their employers. Um, secondly, don't ever put a picture on your resume, uh, you know, please don't. It, it actually can lead into risk for the company evaluating because they don't want to be discriminating mm -hmm. um, on, on a large amount of, uh, you know, things. And then um, hobbies, you know, depending on the type of position, like if it's a nonprofit and your hobbies do align with the mission of that organization, maybe it makes a lot of sense. But if you're going <laughs> into a, an administrative position or, or something, you know, in like a corporate office, um, I don't know that they necessarily need to know that you like hiking and skiing <laughs> and, and stuff like that. So I try and really tailor my presentation to the audience that I'm going to be speaking to. Yeah, I think that's very, very key and important. And even when I used to be in recruitment back in my days, <laughs> a few years ago, um, that is something that we definitely looked at is like when people would put their pay there, I'm like, wow, that's so awkward. <laughs> at least the California minimum wage. But um, yeah, that's something to keep in mind. And one thing that I do want to highlight when you were talking about emails is another thing, even if you do have a professional email that's just, or just the, uh, your name and last name, if it's an email that you use for all your spam, I would still do another and can get another email because the last thing you want is a recruiter to contact you and then it gets lost in all the spam. So that's something else to keep in mind because I've that's happened to me before. Not me personally, but when I went out to recruit, I would have like, I don't understand. I emailed them four times and they never got back to me. And then they they finally did a few weeks later. And it's like, oh, it's because it was my spam. And I'm like, well, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> you know, um, but that's something very true. Like I think um, making sure that when you are conducting and putting your resume together, that it's relevant to the position. Like you mentioned, Riley, I love that you like hiking and maybe the person conducting the interview loves hiking too, but what if they had a horrible experience and <laughs> they have some trauma related to the hiking and that can be bringing up some, maybe not some great memories, but also too, it's not relevant to the position that you are applying for, which is uh, very key. Um, Joshua, any other, uh, other questions? That well, with everything that's happened with the pandemic, I know uh, you guys kind of mentioned it a little bit, but what are like the major things, major changes in interviewing process now that we're living, I guess, in a different world right now, temporarily, what would you say is like some advice you would give someone that's searching a job right now? Um, for searching for jobs, I think that, um, there's a lot to evaluate, um, we try to make sure that we have a long-term plan for the employee once they come into the position. So should mm -hmm. I be talking with the hiring manager? I may ask about that. What are your mm -hmm. plans on returning to the workplace? How do you see this position folding into your corporate structure um, to understand the longevity? In terms of just checking job boards, I think that there are a lot of opportunities mm -hmm. out there right now that are remote or especially mm -hmm. as we come into the holiday season that are seasonal opportunities. Um, there may be more intense competition for that. Mm -hmm. So I always like to try and follow up as well, whether it's having a cover letter that's personalized that shows what I bring to the table and how I can really be effective in the position um, or reaching out to some of the team members on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Hi, I saw that you work at X organization. Mm -hmm. I am so impressed by your commitment to whatever their mission statement is. I, you know, I would love to learn a little bit more about why you love working at the company and um, your, your potential openings. Mm -hmm. And I would reach out to anybody on the talent acquisition team or HR uh, or, you know, that is in the position that you're trying to, to go after. So I think that networking is, mm -hmm. is also really key at this time and easy to do. LinkedIn mm -hmm. is very easy to build your profile, mm -hmm. to, to search for your, those, those connections. And if you're, um, if you share any alumni, you know, if you went mm -hmm. to the same high school or college as some of the people, that can be a starting point for you to mm -hmm. send a connection request and just ask for some guidance. You know, I'm a, mm -hmm. I'm a new applicant and I would love to talk to somebody in your company. Is there somebody that you would want to direct me to? Mm -hmm. Would you say a yeah, cover, a cover letter that's... is necessary? Because I know when I was applying, there were some uh, jobs that asked me for a cover letter or some that wouldn't. Is it always best to have one prepared for each job? Or what would you say for that one? I... 
I think that it really depends on the recruiter uh, and the mm -hmm. organization mm -hmm. if they read them or you know put a lot of weight behind them. I always like to make it personalized, even if it's very short. Mm -hmm. I came across your post on whatever job board. I believe that your mission aligns with mm -hmm. you know what I've done and what I tr you know hold as valuable to me. Um, and then maybe a couple uh, accomplishments um, as they may relate to the position. I like to look at, uh, at the job description, understand what are the fundamental skills that I need to execute in this job? And when have I done something similar? So mm -hmm. maybe I haven't balanced a cash drawer, you know, for a heavy volume retail store, but I sold concessions at the snack, mm -hmm. you know, bar, you know, mm -hmm. for our teams, you know, and I was responsible for managing the inventory as well. And I think that showing different levels of responsibility can help give you an interesting story. Um, and not a lot of people put some time into making personalized cover letters. Mm -hmm. Generally, it's something that they're spamming out to every application that they're sending. And it's fine to have something that's generic. Just make sure that you tweak it a little bit. You know, mm -hmm. put the right company name <laughs> there when you're sending it on. Put the right position title. Uh, that attention to detail, as Anna said, makes a lot of difference. It shows that you actually care about me and, and my organization, what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Um, but it can never, and it can never hurt, you know, it's another way to separate yourself from the pack, so to say, and um, there are a lot of applications that come in, you know, on any given day, um, I'm helping to manage between uh, 30 to 40 open requisitions mm -hmm. that we have posted on our website. And we'll get anywhere from, you know, five to 20 new applications per role per day. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of traffic that comes in. And so doing things to help you stand out, like sending a connection request on LinkedIn or having a cover letter um, and even following up. I submitted my application last week. Um, I would love to know where I am in process. Is there anything further mm -hmm. I can answer for you? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's very good. I, I do have a question in regarding like the follow-up. At what point does it become too much? <laughs> you know, like I've emailed Riley three times and I haven't heard back at all. Like, do I do a phone call at that point or do I just let it go and move on? I, I definitely understand. And there are a lot of people that are just buried in emails. And so I try to be very compassionate and understand that everybody has their own workload. And I, I may feel like I'm shouting you know into the darkness and nobody's answering but maybe they have a lot of people that are checking in with them so i try to be very compassionate in that manner mm -hmm. but i might try um like a three-tiered strategy like week one hey just checking in to make sure that my application was received week two um, i'm still very interested in your company you know I, I also reached out to these people on linkedin they agreed that your company is a great place to work i look forward to hearing back from you and then maybe week three Hi, it doesn't look as if this position is currently hiring or interviewing. I, I still would like to say that I'm intensely interested in the position and I believe my experiences from X, Y, and Z can help me to be successful in this role. I would love to talk to you when this position is um, actually interviewing. So it's kind of like a soft goodbye, you know, and it, I think that it has a call to action to it as well. Like, oh, I don't want them to think that I'm not interviewing. I've just been so busy. I didn't mean to yeah. ignore them. And it, it can sometimes help you know, set the tone. Like I am interested, but I have other opportunities that are also pursuing me as well. Well, I definitely yeah. agree. And, um, well, something I was going to, uh, I kind of had that happen to me when I was, when I got my first job, I, I was thinking like, am I doing too much? Or am I not? But I emailed them, I think it was twice. And they're like, Oh, you know, I'm so sorry. I lost myself in the emails. And like, let actually, and then that's where like it led to more, a deeper conversation and then it led to, you know, me getting the job. So yeah, definitely. I think there's uh, definitely a limit, but also sometimes, you know, their emails can get lost just like yourself. And one thing I was going to say is now I, when I applied for my job, they had a phone interview. I never even knew people did phone interviews. What would you say is the best way to get past, you know, once you because I know it's usually two steps. So when they do the phone interview, they want to do the phone interview first. And then the, after that, they usually do the in-person interview. How would you say is the best way to go from the phone, like be able to go to the next step? What are they looking for in the phone interviews? Like, what are the key things that they're trying to find in the candidate? I think that phone interviews are um, a skill that you can prepare for. Um, mm -hmm. I like to, um, again, go through some of my past accomplishments. So mm -hmm. if I'm looking at the job description and I see that it needs excellent customer service skills mm -hmm. and great follow-up, 
Um, it needs the ability to compose emails and um, do filing or other data entry, and uh, maybe it has additional projects as assigned. Okay, great. I have experience with customer service. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to think back to a couple of times. Um, people generally use behavioral interviewing strategies. So mm -hmm. tell me about a time you dealt with a difficult customer. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't want to say all your customers are difficult, but I can tell you about a time <laughs> that I went above and beyond the call of duty for a client. And let me walk you through what that story was. And I try to make all of my answers smart, so specific measurable, action-oriented, result-driven, and then the time frame um, by showing them that I um, had a difficult client who came in and was upset that they were charged a fee on their account. I looked into the account history. I saw that they had been very consistent, and so I went to my manager, and we were able to get that fee waived. Um, I came back to the customer, and I let them know that I apologized that that had happened to them, and if anything in the future arose, that they could come mm -hmm. to me directly for assistance. Mm -hmm. um, they then came back and brought me a referral um, of somebody else that they wanted us to help them with a the new account, and we were able to help them with a the new loan uh, to buy the building in which their business was occupied, you know, of, mm -hmm. uh, you know, $200,000, you know, something mm -hmm. like that that shows that you address their concern, you took action, and then there were good results, either kudos from your manager or additional, you know, kudos from the, the client, and that those things can help show and demonstrate your ability to succeed in the position. Um, and then secondly, I would always have a couple questions specific to the job, um, mm -hmm. you know, tell me about what makes your best employees stand out in this role and, and what makes them so valuable to your team. Um, what are the projects that you would want tackled in the first, you know, six weeks to six months in this position? Um, you know, why is the role open? You know, is this a position that they're constantly refilling because nobody can work with the manager? Or is this something that they're always promoting up from this position to additional career paths within the company? There are a lot of things that you can learn by asking questions. And then you can also ask questions to introduce your accomplishments. So if it was um, like dealing with cash handling and maybe I haven't dealt with a whole lot of cash handling, um, I would say like, how important is it to be able to, you know, balance your teller drawer and what is the training mm -hmm. on that? You know, the expectations for success. And they'll tell you, and then you can go, hmm, that, that sounds like what I did in my, in my snacks that I was selling for our club or, you know, how I managed the concession stand for the baseball team and demonstrate that I've, I've volunteered for those types of duties before and I excelled at it. Okay. That's really good. That's very good. And that's something very key. And I think I would like to highlight again is just you interviewing also the interviewee. <laughs> I think that's very important. And we, a lot of the times forget to do that. And then we show up surprised at the job wondering, oh, I wish I would have known this, but the interview is not, not, not so much for yourself, but also for the other person. You want to find out if this is a good fit for yourself. You don't want to just like take the position and then be surprised later on and be unhappy. And you waste, you know, you wasted everybody's time, <laughs> yourself and um, the companies, right? And so this is a great time to ask questions. If, is this is a job you actually want? Like, what does it look like during the holiday season? Am I going to be working crazy hours or am I not? Uh, um, things that matter to you, you know, and like you said, what is the, what is it like to be working there? What is the, um, the atmosphere? Is everybody very friendly? Um, you know, just questions like that. But I do want to go back and ask a couple questions regarding the resume. And Anna, you <laughs> seem to highlight proofreading and how important that is when submitting a resume and a cover letter. Would you say that's something that, you know, tends to, people tend to forget when <laughs> submitting a resume is uh, proofreading? They do. They, they do it very often. They do it a lot. I've seen it across all levels of um, jobs and um, people with a lot of experience, people with no experience that they just do. And, you know, if you have someone at, in your, you know, family circle or within your friends that you trust and you can just run it by an extra pair of eyes is very, very helpful. It's just, you know, especially if you've spent a lot of time on putting together the resume, yeah. sometimes after a while, you just kind of, your 
your brain just goes blank and you will <laughs> not see it even if it's like staring blank at you yeah. you will miss it so to have a fresh pair of eyes to go over it and it's you know maybe not every hiring manager or not every recruiter is a big stickler for it but you know it's sometimes as little as you know the the missing space is the comma the so it's it's the grammar it's the punctuation it's yeah. you know the little things you know the, to, you know don't use all caps that sort of thing just <laughs> so details yeah. details are important yeah so. i would say that's very important too and if it comes down to like the last two resumes maybe it'll narrow it down to that like who had the least amount of grammar right um especially if you're going in for a position where it requires writing you want to make sure mm -hmm. that you are highlighting that in your resume but um, I did have a question regarding the resume, and that is how long should a resume be? Because I've seen resumes that are five pages long because they want to highlight everything, right? Like all the volunteer. And it's great to see that you were on every honor roll, every club, but sometimes that's not very necessary. So what would you say is the best, a one pager, two pagers? The feedback that I have seen from executives while they review the resumes, it has been two, two has been the maximum. Uh, you know, it's, it, it, there is a fine balance and I know that it's hard sometimes, you know, if, if it's an individual with, you know, 20, 30 years of experience and depending on the type of the um, role and the position, but usually between one to two, I, I think is, is just the right number of pages, so. <laughs> I see Riley over there nodding, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pages. yeah, I agree. You don't have to go through every single job that you've held in your entire life, you know, <laughs> and um, additionally, you can be more concise the farther back that you're going. And so generally when I'm thinking about bullet points for my resume for each position, um, I'll try and call out some of the major duties as they apply to the role for which I'm applying, as well as a couple of key accomplishments. Have there been times when I help to optimize my environment, where I saved money, where I finished projects weeks ahead of schedule, you know, what, what are those accolades and accomplishments that I have and how can I insert that um, so that they can see that demonstrated experience that somebody, you know, from your first job, you know, and now you're 10, 15 years down the line, they don't need to know everything that went on, you know, the very first job. So uh, maybe one or two bullet points at the most for some of those positions that are farther back, but I think that um, having a one to two page resume is more than sufficient. I see a lot of um, two page resumes as well when it goes past three, four or five. Uh, there's just a lot to read through and it's also about knowing your audience and being concise. You know, or is this person going to be presenting to our executives or our board of directors and are they going to be this verbose with all of this language in it as well? Uh, I think you have to know where, when to hit the high points. Yeah, yeah, I think that's very true. And I, I like that you guys keep highlighting that, making sure that when we are putting our experience there, whether it's volunteer, internships, or past jobs that we have, that it relates to the position that you're, that you're um, applying for currently, you know, you want to relate that, you know, and so I think that's very, very important um, to highlight and remember when putting together a resume and being concise <laughs> to the point. Yeah. Um, another question that I had regarding um, the resume, because now that we all have LinkedIn, and this is something that I've been asked quite a bit is, because I know now on LinkedIn, you're able to download the, um, the resume version of it. Is that something that you would recommend? Or would you just say um, people doing the traditional format of maybe a template that's on Word or Google Docs that people use for a resume? I definitely say that there are a lot of free templates out there that are more than acceptable to utilize and you can personalize them to fit your level of experience and the type of job that you're going after. Um, there is a new feature on LinkedIn that's click to apply. And so you can share your LinkedIn profile directly with the hiring manager or the talent acquisition team, and it'll just share link to your profile. If you are going to do that, I would encourage you to build out your LinkedIn profile as if it's a resume. I have people who will share their LinkedIn profile with me, but it doesn't even have any bullet points about what their job is, or uh, maybe it's a little less than professional. Tune that thing up, you know, get a great headshot on there, add some things to your summary that show 
you know, what it is that you bring to the table and what you're looking to achieve, especially if it is a point of time of transition for you. I think that there are a lot of things that you can do to make it easier to see how you can apply those skills that you may have from other internships or other positions that are in a different industry or area to be effective in your jobs that you're targeting today. Yeah, yeah, okay. That's very good to know. <laughs> we have uh, actually some questions from here in the audience that are watching. Uh, one of them was uh, someone asked, how many years back of experience is suggested nowadays? Uh, I think that it depends on the type of position for which you're going. Mm -hmm. Maybe you have a role that was similar, but mm -hmm. it's like eight or 10 years back. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe it makes sense to include that on your resume. I think that all of this advice comes with a grain of salt, but use your best judgment, mm -hmm. right? Um, but if I'm looking to limit my resume to maybe two pages, uh, I don't need to go through 20 years of career history. Maybe I, I go through the last four or five positions mm -hmm. and then say additional experience in, and then list out maybe the industries or the types of roles that mm -hmm. you had. Perfect, perfect. And this next question, I can really resonate with it when I was applying. It says, uh, Resumes are now scanned or downloaded into a database. Database. How can I ensure my resume is properly formatted? Uh, I would say that um, Word documents are the easiest. Mm -hmm. uh, PDFs are a little harder to scan. Mm -hmm. It's called an applicant tracking system, that okay. database that your resume is getting uploaded into. And sometimes the um, application portal will ask you to retype your whole resume. And I know it's a pain, <laughs> but that's how they get the data. Mm -hmm. um, so I think one thing that's important is really to tailor your resume to the job that you're applying for. I think that it's okay to have a couple different resume templates, you know, an administrative one, a customer service one, mm -hmm. and a sales resume, for example. Um, so all three of those are targeted to those types of positions, and they're going to be a little bit different in the accomplishments and in the duties that I say that mm -hmm. I took on. Um, when I'm applying to something with the customer service, you know, position, I'm going to go to their job description, and I'm going to look at what words they're using, and make sure that I'm trying to incorporate those words into my resume. Uh, there's a, a really silly, sneaky trick where um, you can put in a bunch of text in small point and mm -hmm. make it like white so that it doesn't appear when you look at the resume but it actually pulls in their whole job description uh, mm. i can generally tell when somebody's you know done that because it has a big old blank wall of text that if i put my cursor over i can highlight and find but it's a smart trick and what they're trying to do is have as many words from the job description in their resume as possible because when i search through um I, I can either look at the candidates who have applied or I can look at everybody mm. in the database. So if I do a search for everybody in the database and I'm putting in those keywords from the job description, oh. it'll highlight that person as either a hundred percent match or on a sliding <laughs> scale based off the words that I'm searching for. So I try to just authentically put those words into my resume so that it's <laughs> tailored to this particular job and position. And, and it really does show like I, I am capable of doing X, Y, and Z that you're looking for. And it takes just a little bit of time to mm -hmm. put that personalization into um, effect, but it, it, it makes a really big difference, especially again, if it is a time of transition for you and your resume doesn't traditionally look like something that that person would be doing. Mm -hmm. taking the time to really call out your applicable experience that may be relevant, but not exactly what they were looking for can help you stand apart. Is there anything on it that you'd also like to include on this one? I cannot possibly top that little tip that you just shared. I didn't even know about it. So <laughs> no. <laughs> Me neither. I have heard about that. That's a sneaky way of like, as you know, finding the words, the key words, right? For the job description. <laughs> That's really a really good tip. Um, <laughs> I did want to ask a follow up question in regards to that. Um, as far as references, how important are those? And um, do you guys actually call references? Yeah, so um, I would just put references available upon request. I try to be very protective of my people's information rather than just putting it out there for the world to see. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it depends on the type of role uh, for which you're applying. So um, I, I generally think that the organization has a case-by-case -case basis, um, either like a, a policy, like, yes, we check all, all, res uh, all references on these certain types of positions or 
Um, we either do for everybody or we don't for everybody. And it's not gonna be the same everywhere. So I've worked in different organizations where we called every single person that was listed on that. And I've worked in other organizations where they're like, eh, you know, if you're listing somebody as a reference, they're probably going to say something nice about you anyway. Um, <laughs> and part of the background check process that you may experience when you're applying and, and taking on a new job, it will check your uh, and verify the last employer uh, for the dates of employment, the title that you held, as well as the name of the company. And then they'll ask, are they eligible for rehire? And then that's either a yes or no question. And so mm -hmm. then that will be something that's graded. Okay. That's very good to know because, um, yeah, I always, when I recruited and I had references there, I always knew I'm like, it's probably going to be a friend or family member or a coworker that they got along with. Like, Hey, can I put you down as a reference? <laughs> but it also depends on the job and <laughs> depends on who, what you're applying for that they may ask for a reference, you know? So, yeah. And I guess one last thing I would add there is make sure somebody knows they're your reference and to be expecting a call. <laughs> I have called people and I've been like, oh, you were listed as a reference on this person's resume. And they were completely unprepared for the call or they gave me a very honest assessment, um, which I don't think that person really realized that they were gonna give. And it wasn't necessarily <laughs> yeah. what the person who was using their name was going to be hoping they'd say. So <laughs> check in with those people, you know, ask them, Honestly, you know, what did you like about working with me and what are the areas I can improve on? Because I think that you'll have a greater understanding of what they'd say to somebody like me who's going to be calling them. <laughs> That's true. That is very true. Make sure you let them know that you're going to put them down as a reference and have an idea of what they're going to say. <laughs> <laughs> um, Josue, any other questions? Um, yeah, uh, in regards to every, uh, since interviews are more online now, that's what I've been seeing and hearing from friends. How would you say is the best way to conduct a uh, over the computer interview, virtual a virtual interview? Yeah, Anna, do you want to jump in with any tips? Uh, sure. So I've had the pleasure of doing some mock-up interviews with Riley for another organization. So that's <laughs> my most recent experience with the virtual interviews. Um, I would say the background setting, you know, whether making sure that you're in the right spot in your apartment, home, et cetera, or you can use a background like me and Riley are using, um, just, you know, make sure that it's presentable, that it's professional. Um, you know, if you're doing a background, if you want to make it personal, just not try to make it too cutesy and kind of so <laughs> try to Go for something a little neutral again just professionalism and again think of it that this is in a sense almost like a real life in-person interview so don't don't downplay it and don't don't think of it as you know as a lesser one it still is important you're still leaving the impression so what you're wearing uh, you know the the grooming the attire um and then the body language you know try if if, if possible i would say you know maybe do some um test interviews with friends or family so you can kind of get you know the angle of the camera make sure that your hardware is working properly I mean everybody in these days I mean you guys all heard my dog bark earlier so <laughs> everyone is very forgiving and understanding of these things you know children and such things but um you know one or two mishaps are okay but you know if you've got constant static or something like that then maybe you need to kind of revisit in plan a little better and find a different corner, different time, et cetera. So just, just in, in short, just plan ahead and plan it well. And so is my background OK with the flowers here? Would that help me get it's the job? Very nice. Yes, I love the lighting <laughs> and everything. It's All right. Perfect. perfect. <laughs> You're very pretty. <laughs> Did you want to say anything, Riley, about that? Uh, no, I think that Anna hit it ill you know you're representing yourself mm -hmm. and so you want to be as professional as possible um i i think that there is a lot of ability to whether it's you know on your phone like just recording a video of like you saying um, either a question to the interviewer or capturing a response because i think you can generally anticipate some of the interview questions that are going to come at you based on the job description and, and what the duties will be um, so maybe if it's dealing with the the public and the customers, you know, having a couple customer service stories that, you know, show how much you cared about the customer or the organization and how you went above and beyond. Or if it's a position that's dealing with sales and really excellent follow up, 
maybe highlighting a story like that. And I think if you think to your greatest accomplishments in your last position or internship, mm -hmm. um, you know, what were you most proud to have achieved? What, what projects really resonated with you that you were passionate about? Um, try to make that into a statement that you can present either as a response to a question that they ask or introduce it. It sounds like customer service skills are important to this position. How important do you think that that is to success in this role? I think it's very important. Great. Let me tell you a story about how I'm awesome at customer service. So there are a lot of things that you can introduce in. And I think that if you just listen to yourself and, and see yourself saying this, you'll become more comfortable with it. And my last tip that I like to do is um, when you're on Zoom or something, you can see where somebody's looking. So if I'm talking to this corner or I'm looking over here, <laughs> it, it's not giving the best impression. And so what actually does work the best is to look directly into the camera and it feels super awkward to do. I'm not looking <laughs> anybody in the eye right now, but I know that I look my best. And so take a little bit of time to practice that as well. And then just be forgiving with yourself. I think that a lot of people are adjusting to a virtual environment, but it's actually made it a lot easier for people mm -hmm. who may be farther from the position to get that chance to talk to the hiring manager and learn a little mm -hmm. bit more about it. Um, so there's a lot of pluses and minuses that come with it, but then just remember everybody's human and we're all trying to do our best. Mm -hmm. No, I think that's a hundred percent correct. And someone in the audience asked, uh, "Do you guys see it as a plus uh, of in the hiring candidate that takes a that they put on the resume that they took workshop classes that were related to the field of the of the job? So, like maybe if it's something about if they're applying to a bank position, they had some past experience attending workshops in baking or something like that. Because I know people put their hobbies and skills. Would that be something that you you would say you can add on a resume?" Absolutely. Um, so if I was going to title something like that, I would call it trainings, mm. you know, trainings mm -hmm. or certifications, uh, pursued, um, pursuing whatever certification that may apply to the field, or if it was a workshop or a certificate program, mm -hmm. or even something like on LinkedIn learning or any of like the lynda.com, you know, uh, open course where I think that, you know, saying like, I went above and beyond and I personally did this and, you know, this is the course that I completed and this is either the certificate or the distinction that I earned. Um, it can definitely show, especially again, if you are transitioning to something that is a little different from what you've done day to day, showing that you've already done some of that prep work to hit the ground ready to go um, can help make all the difference. What if they add on their resume that they were trained by you through this Facebook workshop and they put it on their resume and they apply for you and then you see it on the resume? <laughs> I, I don't know if it'll work to impress me, <laughs> if it should be. Um, but I think that there are a lot of resources out there as well. Um, there's this guy, Lou Adler, uh, A-D-L-E-R. He wrote this book called The Ultimate Guide to Hiring and Getting Hired. Mm -hmm. um, there's this other book, um, Knock Dead, Hiring the Best. Um, there are a lot of books out there that are geared around trying to help individuals, but those people, um, maybe reading books isn't really your thing. Mm -hmm. A lot of them have YouTube channels. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, there's a, I think it's Stacy Zappar. She's also another um, like hiring consultant. There are a lot of people on LinkedIn and on YouTube mm -hmm. that are offering free advice. Mm -hmm. So maybe I don't list it, on my resume to say that I took this <laughs> resume building training, but I think that understanding um, the difference from what the hiring manager is looking for and what you're providing in your resume can help to uncover if there are any gaps in what you're presenting and what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. And it makes it a little bit easier for you to anticipate what's going to happen mm -hmm. and then respond um, with your best prepared answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think a very something to keep in mind that relates to that is being honest. <laughs> I don't know how many people I've interviewed in the past that embellished a little bit on their experience. And when you would put them in that position, um, they weren't trained or equipped um, to handle that sort of um, position. And so I think it's very, very important to, to be honest. Because the last thing you want is to be put into a position where you're going to need additional training and it's going to feel frustrating for everybody, right? 
Yeah, I think it's about setting the expectations. So maybe if I took a, a training course and I've done like a one or three day workshop on something, I wouldn't call myself an expert because if I'm <laughs> getting put into that level of an expert, um, your measure for how success is evaluated is going to be different. They're going to expect that you're going to be here as an expert instead of being here. And maybe they would have given you a little bit more ramp up time or training to be effective in that role, but you did yourself a disservice by saying that you were coming in with skills that you didn't have. And so I think a lot of it is having the healthy attitude to learn and saying um, like, oh, that sounds similar to how I picked up the, you know, the responsibilities for this past job. And, you know, I was trained and I took over these roles in about a week and then I became the trainer to the rest of my staff. That's very good, very good. Josue, any other questions? I was just going to say that I was I was laughing a bit because I had a friend that actually did that. He put fake references. He put fake job titles. He was the CEO of this. He, he did this, executive of that. And it was just, he just applied for just like, I think it was like a retail job. But, it was, <laughs> but yeah, definitely don't put fake numbers. Don't put fake titles. No, no fake experiences. Oh or don't lie that, you know, like your, your hobbies or like skills that you have. So yeah. I think he put that he knew like five languages and <laughs> but yeah definitely don't do that it's it's not going to help you at all <laughs> but yeah, yeah overall all the tips and advice that you guys have given us i think has been something that is eye-opening and that's very important that we apply in our interviewing and resume process and and just be able to adapt to the, the different things that are required you know whether it's you know right now if you're applying if you're in college you're just going to graduate. I think this is a really great workshop that you can, you know, maybe look back, show with your friends and review it and just think about the things that you're doing currently right now before you apply in the job and just ask yourself, ask friends, get a second, uh, have someone else review your resumes, practice. Sometimes what I do, uh, and some people think it's weird, but I talk to myself and I pretend to do like the interview. I'm like, so hi, how are you doing, Josh? I'm doing fine. And I just play out the whole like interview process. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, you did good. That was good. You know, like, I know mean, it could be weird for some people, but it helps, you know, it helps, you know, that way you, your words come out and like, oh, I should definitely say that in the interview process. But yeah, that's my piece of advice for everyone watching and what I've seen helped, has helped me. If you think it's weird, don't do it, but it's helped me. <laughs> um, yeah, no, thanks for sharing that. And um, I think the biggest takeaways from today's discussion is just be honest, practice, proofread, making sure that you're tailoring your resume that is to the job you're applying for, the job that you want, um, especially when you're looking at your work history, your volunteer history, your internship history, trainings that's related to the job itself, um, and highlighting those things that they're looking for in the job description. Um, but before we go, before we end this conversation, I would like to give Anna and Riley any la um, a minute or so if, if there's any last minute tips that you would like to share and highlight in regards to the resume or as you prepare for a virtual interview. Um, well, all I would say is, Riley mentioned this before, it's, you know, I would end this by saying, just stay optimistic, be optimistic and, you know, don't be discouraged by the current situation or if you've had some, you know, slow times in terms of, you know, people getting back to you, et cetera. It's just, uh, Riley hopefully will support this, but I think, you know, sometimes hiring can be seasonal depending on the position and uh, that you're applying for. So, uh, sometimes it'll be a little more active. Um, sometimes less active. It's a good opportunity to be proactive, you know, be, I mean, this in a bad way, but do be aggressive. And so don't sort of take on the back seat and expect things to land in your lap, you know, participate in workshops like these. There are so many resources online, free resources mm -hmm. uh, these days that you can definitely, you know, gain a competitive advantage by gaining mm -hmm. skills and doing your research and being prepared and planning ahead. And so, um, COVID or no COVID, it's mm -hmm. where there's a will, there's a way and just kind of, you know, be in the right mindset. And mm -hmm. so good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Yeah, I, I think that Anna said it, you know, perfectly, you know, just be very kind to yourself and to other people right now. Um, don't be afraid to follow up. But um, also, you may not be following up with the right person. So don't get angry, you know, if they're not getting back to you, ask if there's somebody that's more appropriate to be sending your emails to or, or to give a call to you. 
um, a lot of the time we, we want to help as much as we can. And I think that having your friends and your family overlook or look over your resume for errors, um, have you practice a couple interview questions with them, uh, ask your colleagues that you work with now or um, that are in your internships or other volunteer groups, you know, what do you think that I really bring to the table here? What have I done well? Um, a lot of people can sometimes tell you your accomplishments better than you recognize them. Uh, I think that I want you to be a cheerleader for yourself and <laughs> know that you're worthy and that you are an amazing person. You have so much to bring to the table. And sometimes we just need a little bit of help seeing that and pulling it out and then putting it on a resume. But a resume is just a conversation starter. You know, people don't get the job because of their resume. They get the job because of how they interview and mm -hmm. how well that somebody can think that they do the job. So it's not rocket science, but, you know, put a little bit of effort into it. Keep an Excel spreadsheet and, you know, put a link, you know, this is the job that I applied for on this date. You know, I followed up on this date with this person. Just be very systematic. Getting a job is a job in and of itself, but there are a lot of free resources out there to help you. Yeah, definitely. There's a ton of education out there, especially in today's world of YouTube and social media. There's a ton of people out there providing a ton of help. And so take advantage of those. And like Riley and Anna both mentioned, it's always good to ask for feedback. Even if you don't get the position, perhaps ask for feedback. If that employer is willing to give that feedback, take it and run with it, apply it. You know, it may not be the right position for you now, but perhaps in the future. And when you come back in the future, show how you grew from that feedback that you received. And so, um, but with that, Joshua and Josue, is there anything else you would like to add? If not, um, I think we are done with today's conversation. Oh, someone just asked, uh, what are the names of the two books that you reference, uh, Riley? Oh. Oh, you're on mute. Oh, okay. <laughs> the conference, yeah. Uh, this one is called Knock em Dead, Hiring the Best. And the other one, let me get the exact book title. His name is Lou Adler. Maybe we can add him right there in the description <laughs> for everybody in the chat. <clears throat> But yeah, but thank you though. Overall, you know, everything was really amazing. You guys did a really great job. You really broke it down. And I feel like I'm, I'm I think I'm gonna go apply to like 10 jobs right now. Like I feel so <laughs> empowered. <laughs> okay, it was really an essential guy for hiring and getting hired with Lou Adler. Cool. Oh, okay, so cool. we'll add those in the chat for everybody on Facebook so that you have those. And um, you can go out and buy that book um, on Amazon. I'm sure you can find it on there and mm -hmm. read it and apply it. I'm sure you can probably even find YouTube videos on the author himself and get some <laughs> tips there. <laughs> Riley's nodding yes, so yes, do it. <laughs> all right, cool. Anything else, Joshua, you would like to add? Just thank you. Thank you to uh, all of our presenters today as well as the yeah. audience. Yeah, thank you both so much. Thank you, Bank, Bank of California. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Riley, for joining us today for this conversation. It was very insightful and uh, we really appreciate your time. Of course. Thank you so much and good luck, everybody. All right. Thank you. Thank Bye. You.